for right now, you need one place to put it. Now, the problem is most of us have lives that if you put everything in one place, it just becomes even more overwhelming. Who knows what I'm talking about here? I've always had this belief. If you want to be successful at anything in life, never leave the site of setting a goal without doing something that commits you to fulfillment. If you get, like, you're in state, right, when you do something. While you're in state, that's the time to commit yourself to something that makes you follow through. So I'd call somebody up. I'd schedule something. I'd lock in the next meeting. I'd sign up for the class. I'd enroll the guy who was going to mentor me. I'd set the meeting with a mastermind of people I met. I did something so that whatever I committed to, there was something when I went home that would pull me there. It's structure. Everything that comes in your mind, anything you can think of, because we're going to basically do a little mini RPM version of things right now. Anything comes to my mind. I'm here, and while you're here doing something, you're driving in your car, and you think of an idea for your business or one of your businesses. When you're starting out in a new business or career or just your life, you have to develop amazing skills. Motivational speaker Tony Robbins has tips and tricks that you can incorporate in your daily life to become better. If you want to be successful, find something to commit to, to reach that fulfillment. Structure will always help you achieve your goals. Life is made up of two things, what you desire most and what you fear the most. So try to expand on your desire and eliminate your fears. Get rid of what holds you back and your inner conflicts. You have to recognize that emotion is the force of life. So figure out what drives you and how you can hone those feelings and skills. We are all leaders in something, so hone your leadership skills. At the end of the day, love is the ultimate weapon. If you can get people to love and trust you, you can become successful. If you can incorporate these tips in your daily life, hopefully you can develop some amazing skills too. I think most great therapists already have that skill. I think it's what makes them great. I know it sounds corny, but I really believe I teach all the coaches that I work with that love is the ultimate weapon because you can pierce anything with it. And when people feel safe and when they feel that you truly love them, they will give you permission to do things that most people wouldn't do. I have a different philosophy. My philosophy is when a person comes and sits down, you know, in the beginning of my practice, I think, you know, I, I took on what I call the impossibles. All the people have been therapy for seven years, 10 years. And I said, come see me on Holland one hour. You know, it's a little sure. bit over. That kind of striking approach was there. But the biggest piece for me is a lot of therapists have been trained, depends on their style, mm -hmm. but certainly in dynamic psychotherapy, Freudian psychology, you don't, you don't lead the patient. What the hell are they doing there in front of you? If you don't lead the patient, that's why it takes eight years to get something done or right. five years or two years or whatever the case may be. So my whole approach is I need to find out who you are. What do you want? What do you need? What do you fear? I think life is the dance between what you desire most and fear most. And if I can expand what you desire, that hunger, and I can help you to eliminate or reduce that fear, then your life becomes bigger, richer, and more wide. How many think that the economic environment is going to go through seasons? We're going to have some more ups and downs. Well, then if we know that, our goal, you and I as leaders, should be to anticipate that. In fact, everyone in this room is a leader of something, whether you're the leader of the company or whether you're a leader of a department or whether you're a parent or hopefully you're a leader and not a follower. If you're a leader, you've got to exercise that skill. And so I want to talk to you about that and one of the most important skills of that. But most people don't exercise that leadership because they're dropping behind in their skill sets. How many of you in this room have ever experienced the absolute total humiliation of playing a video game against the child? What happens when you play the child? Who always wins? Come on, who wins? Always, why? Is it because they're faster? Is it they're smarter, they're younger, their neurons are functioning at a quicker tempo? Here's how it usually works. You're a mother or father, you're an uncle or an aunt, your grandfather or grandmother, you're a friend of the family, you're looking for a gift, we live in a tech world, in a world where today children play with an iPad and learn how to use it before they know how to tie their shoes. How different is that world? The bottom line of why I'm here is that I'm really in a position, I'm not here to motivate you, obviously, you don't need that. And a lot of times that's what people think I do, and it's the furthest thing from it. Um, what happens though is people say to me, well, I don't need any motivation. And I say, well, that's interesting, that's not what I do. I'm the why guy. I don't know why you do what you do. What is your motive for action? What is it that drives you in your life today, not 10 years ago, or are you running the same pattern? Because I believe that the invisible force of internal drive activated is the most important thing in the world. I'm here because I believe emotion is the force of life. All of us here have great minds. 
You know, most of us here have great minds. I don't know if I'm in the category, but we all know how to think. And with our minds, we can rationalize anything, we can make anything happen. I agree with what was described a few days ago about this idea that people work in their self-interest, but we all know that you don't work in your self-interest all the time. Because when emotion comes into it, the wiring changes in the way it functions. And so it's wonderful for us to think intellectually about how the life of the world is, and especially those who are very smart. We can play this game in our head, but I really want to know what's driving you. And what I'd like to maybe invite you to do by the end of this talk is explore where you are today for two reasons. One, so that you can contribute more. And two, so that hopefully we can not just understand other people more, but maybe appreciate them more and create the kinds of connections that can stop some of the challenges that we face in our society today. They're only going to get magnified by the very technology that's connecting us. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.